Francis H. Cheaton, which created the bedrock for Ghana to qualify for its first World Cup in Germany in 2006. Michael OTJ chronicles the importance of Ben Kofi's legacy to the development of Ghana football. He was um, potentially uh, the biggest all-round person Ghana had. Remember, he played for the Black Stars. He coached the Black Stars. He became a president of the Football Association. He was a technical director in Botswana, managed in Zimbabwe. Uh, but I think, unlike most football people, he was such a deeply analytical and academical person. I think that when we, we enjoy the benefits of Ghana becoming a major football nation in the world off the back of three World Cups, a lot of that credit for the first World Cup qualification has to go to Uncle Ben Kofi. Now, most people may have forgotten this, but in 2001, when he became Football Association president, Uncle Ben Kofi decided that he didn't like the quality of players in the Black Stars. He was worried about the fact that he thought Ghana was using too many overage players, and his plan as part of a five year development plan was one to make academies the bedrock of Ghana football and to give youth a chance. As part of that project, he then spearheaded uh, the mass exodus of established players like uh, Augustin Ahimfo, CK Akono and the rest from the Blasters and introduced a group of players from the 2001 world under 20 squad that had finished second uh, into the black stars even with that 2001 world under 70 and uh, under 20 squad uncle ben Kofi played a big part in dropping established names like charles taylor steve you know drew uh, ishmelado and the rest fearing about age issues now the players he promoted will then go on to vindicate him players like Suleiman Tari, michael Essien, john pencil john mesa and the rest went on to be promoted into the squad that played at the 2002 nations cup and then went on to become the backbone of ghana squad that qualified for the world cup so i think that you could say uncle ben kofi was the first man who openly confronted the issues of age cheating in ghana football and that by taking some action against it provided the basis for Ghana to then build on a solid foundation and go on to play at the World Cup. I think Ghana football misses, will miss a colossal figure. The advantage is that he's putting a lot of his thoughts into, into writing. And, and it's not just Ghana football that will miss him. I mentioned Botswana, I mentioned Zimbabwe. He was a significant member of CAF's coaching program and FIFA's coaching program. But the beauty, as I said, is that he's documented his thoughts. And I hope that going forward, we'll be able to learn from that.